one team in the nation, Arizona State, though, looking to take them down. Welcome to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. From the Coliseum in Los Angeles, Pac-10 football on ABC Sports. The Arizona State Sun Devils coming calling on the Southern California Trojans. USC ranked first in the national polls. Arizona State 15-19. Both have won five games without a loss. As we look at the conference standings, both are 2-0. and UCLA playing later today, also 2-0. and So this is the weekend where the race to the Rose Bowl begins to take some shape. Coliseum in Los Angeles, the third week in a row that the top-ranked Southern California Trojans have got to shake off the effects of a hard game, Dan Fouts, and try to come back and play another tough nut in Arizona State. Well, in Arizona State, Keith has uh, the best long ball thrower I've seen in this conference since the Trojans, Carson Palmer. Like Palmer, Andrew Walter is tall. He can see over the defense and locate his receiver down the field. He's only been sacked five, eight times in five games, and even though he doesn't have a real spur, speed burner at wide receiver, Walter has used his experience to know when to throw deep. His ratio of 15 touchdown passes to just one interception is truly remarkable. Well, Andrew came back for his uh, fourth year. He's now a grad student, and uh, his coach says he has more patience now than before. Southern California brings a guy on the field today, Lindale White, that may turn out to be a prime figure before the day's done. Well, with the injury to wide receiver Steve Smith, Lindell White has to become a huge contributor for the Trojans this afternoon against the Sun Devils. Last week against California, you can see his numbers right there. But it was last year he was the difference for the Trojans as he set a freshman record when he gained 140 yards, scored twice. Now a strong effort for White will open things up for his running mate, Reggie Bush, and of course take the pressure off of quarterback Matt Leiner. Now let's join Todd Harris on the field. All right, thank you very much. Well, Pete, you coming to this game a little dinged up. What's your biggest concern as the defensive coordinator as well? Well, we got to make sure our guys hang together in the back end. You know, Darnell Bain's a little banged up, but uh, he had a great week of work, so we should be okay. All right, good luck to you. Thank you very much. All right, Keith, we'll send it back up to you. So it's a pair of 5-0 and football teams and uh, Southern California, the defending co-national champions, and they will kick off. Arizona State will receive it. Ball is kicked well into the end zone, and uh, Rudy Burgess... Took it about four yards deep in the end zone and takes a pretty good lick as he comes out to about the 14 yard line. That's pretty deep to be trying to return the ball against this team and it was Justin Tolliver that put the lick on him. Andrew Walter and his numbers. You need a mule train to haul that catalog around and he's going to set at least two more records today before probably before halftime maybe before the first quarter is over. But he has created an astounding career at Arizona State University. And so here's your first snap of the ball game with Hakeem Hill, the single back, and a penalty flag. Came from the umpire. It's going to be on Arizona State. Yeah, it looked like Walter wanted to change the play at the line of scrimmage, and one of his guys up front twitched a little Dead bit. Ball. False start on the offense number 71. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Larry Farina is our referee, the fourth appearance of this crew. We're going to have to ask Larry to join after. Here's the backs and receivers for the Sun Devils. Hakeem Hill is playing with a cracked bone in his right arm. That encumbers him some, but he's a plucky fellow and had a very big game last week. Walter back to throw from his goal line gets his pass away and it is incomplete. It was intended for his tight end Zach Miller who is an added dimension but he's throwing into that cover two and once again the middle linebacker Lofa Tatupu was right there to break it up. Offensive front Grayling Love goes over to tackle on the left side. He played there a year ago. Uh, Chaz White is out today. Mike Pollock moves up to the right guard spot where Grayling Love has been playing this season. It's a pretty good offensive front. And the tight end, as we said, Zach Miller has been a very important persona. Hagan, however, number 80, Derek Hagan, is their go to guy. They'll run the ball with Hakeem Hill. He'll get it up to the nine, and that's all the Trojans are going to give him. 
I think Southern California enjoyed the fact last week that they were able to get out in front of a tough football team. They led Cal 10 nothing in the first quarter and they know this team from uh, Arizona State you can't give them a 10 or 14 point lead. The defensive front Mike Patterson and Sean Cody are the anchors of it. They're in the middle and they will get some push and those ends are getting better and better and the linebackers are very quick and determined and the secondary today as Darnell Bing who started the season at strong safety. He's back but Scott Ware is out with a broken foot and there's a penalty flag and again it comes out of the pocket of the umpire another false start against Arizona State so just a horrible start for the Sun Devils offense. Good well, tackle on the opening kickoff by Justin Tolliver wearing number 21 not to be confused with Lendell White and then two offsides penalties and now the Sun Devils are all the way back inside their own four yard line. It's one of those instances where you're almost tempted to just go ahead and kick it out of there before something bad happens because nothing good has happened yet. That's right. Out of the end zone pressures coming pass away and he may be lucky to get that one back because there were three Trojans out there all wishing they were six inches taller. So they will punt from the end zone on fourth down now and USC should come out of this exchange with pretty good field position. Chris McDonald on the other hand is a very good kicker. He's a red shirt freshman out of Mesa and he's averaging a little better than 43 yards per punt. Chris is a big guy 6 to 220 and roots it out of there. It is a good kick and a fair catch is called by Reggie Bush at the 45 yard line. You've got pretty good coverage downfield under a good punt if you can force Reggie Bush into making a fair catch and that's what they did. Matt Leinert the quarterback for Southern California injured a year ago he injured his knee in the ball game over at Tempe but he came back in the second half the Trojans scored 27 points in the fourth quarter and beat them handily and that was the day that Matt Leinert became the leader of this USC Trojan football team and this time around he starts in very good field position to say the least. From the 45 yard line on the Sun Devil side of the field, uh, Leinert back, looks, throws, balls out here. It's one on one. It is David Kirkman, the fullback, out of the backfield. And all he had to do was get past Chris McKenzie. McKenzie, a cornerback, is 5'9, 176 pounds, but he's tough. Lindale White, number 21, the big back. Reggie Bush will be all over the field today. Those uh, McFoy and Jarrett. Jarrett is a freshman, just a teenager, and he starts, and he may be very important. The offensive front is a very good one for Southern California. We'll have more on that from the man who coaches him in a minute. Here is Leonard standing up and throwing quickly to Bush, and Bush has got a first down as he streaks to the 30 yard line. Tim Davis uh, I asked him yesterday about this Arizona State defense which ranks in the top 25 in every defensive category and the offensive line coach put it this way. We face the best defense every day in practice and and that's that's kind of what that's kind of our mantra our deal uh, is it if we make it through practice it, it's it's that, uh, that's good you know if we block our defense because we go full speed now I mean we, and we see everything. Translated, I think that means we ain't worried. Here's the ball handed off to Lindale White, and White, who had 21 carries a year ago for 140 yards and two touchdowns, will move from the 30 down to about the 23. The Sun Devil defense, the front group, pretty good. Uh, Verdon and Hill in the middle. They need some push from them. Thrower and Caldwell good on the outside. Linebackers have been the story. Along with these guys here in the middle, the linebackers Robinson, Burks, and Williams really good. And the secondary, there's some short guys back there, but they'll they'll fight you. And guess who's coaching them? Mark Carrier, two-time All-American here at USC, and he's got them playing feisty. Leinert back, looks to the corner, goes short. Incomplete had pressure coming and was taken down on the play by a thrower Ishmael thrower a defensive end who came to the inside and he rolled right into the quarterback and took him down. Yeah throwers got two and a half sacks on the year. Here he is number 49 getting away from a very poor block by Lendell White that time the Trojans had Reggie Bush lined up as a wide receiver Lendell White as you saw missing the block there but also Kirkman was in the game so Bush already has been in two different positions in that backfield 
And it is third down and three for USC. And they spread the field. Four wide outs. Liner with good protection goes short again for his tight end. He threw for the first down. Justin Burks was covering Alex Holmes. And Justin Burks is going to get the penalty flag all over the back of Alex Holmes. But if he doesn't have this type of coverage, Holmes will catch the ball, make the first down. So it's that, a penalty against the Sun Devils. That's the type of mismatch you want for your offense. Get your tight end isolated on the middle linebacker. Pass interference, defense number five. First down at the spot of the foul. But Norm Chow is really using a lot of different formations. Here's the matchup right here. Holmes stops on his route. Not sure that ball was catchable, but uh, the penalty called nonetheless. The hammerlock was impressive. Yes, it was. There's Norm right next door to us. Reggie Bush is on the bottom of your screen now. Closest to the camera right there. Leinert looking at him, throws it to him. He got two Sun Devils over here, and they get him quickly, and here's another penalty flag. He may have had an ineligible receiver down the field against SC. That was supposed to be a quicker pass. Leinert hesitated as he waited for Bush to make the proper adjustment. SC trying to get downfield. Receiver downfield, number 67 offense. Five yard penalty, replay first down. That's the center, Ryan Khalil, who left too early. He's trying to put Reggie in the end zone. <laughs> Boy, the Sun Devils really knew exactly what they were doing, though. They had two guys on them. Well, they changed defenses. They went from that 4 2 5 stuff to a 4 3 alignment, and it, it changed the life of a lot of people. And so it's first down and 15 now for USC as the ball comes back to the 25 yard line. Gray afternoon may rain tonight. Quick pop. The coverage by the secondary of Arizona State is I mean they are in their shirts. And, and this cat ball has to be caught though by the true freshman Dwayne Jarrett number eight working against Josh Golden does a nice job getting off inside but just lets the ball go right through his hands off his shoulder. Tight coverage by Golden. Good reaction by the linebackers, but that ball has to be caught. Yeah, you had him shielded completely, didn't he? Well, he's six foot five, and Golden goes about five ten. You will see Jarrett try to use his height advantage on both Golden and McKenzie later on. Jason Mitchell, number fifteen, comes into the ball game for the Trojans now, and Leinert back, good protection, goes down the middle, sliding catch by Chris McFoy, and it's first and goal, Southern California. Just short of the five yard line. That was a smart throw by Matt Leinert because McFoy had double coverage. The linebacker had him short and a safety over the top, but the linebacker had his back to Leinert, so Leinert could throw it low to him and make the completion. If he throws this ball high, watch the coverage here by the middle linebacker as he takes off looking up for McFoy, but the ball goes right past his shoulder, and McFoy has it at the five. White is the single back for Southern California. Gets it. And they'll take him down in a hurry. Jamar Williams, one of those three linebackers, starting the game today. The three ASU linebackers had 113 tackles between them. So they are busy. They're all about the same size and walk with about the same gait. Brett Guy, who is the coordinator, defensive coordinator for the Sun Devils, Oklahoma State Cowboys. Reggie Bush and Lee Webb now are in the backfield for USC. It's second down and 10. Miners pass to the goal line. Touchdown, Bush. Reggie Bush. A pass absolutely perfectly placed by liner with some steam on it and between the linebackers his own coverage for Brent guy and the Sun Devils and Bush split it and a, just a perfect dart by Matt liner Ryan Colleen 
Out of Tom Malone's hold, Will Collins will snap it for the Trojans. SC getting on the board first. Everything worked. And it's seven to nothing, Southern California, with 10 minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first quarter. And so far, not much good has happened for the Sun Devils. We have the coolest temperature for a football game in Southern California so far this season today. It's 66 degrees. So it is very comfortable. Burr. They said the game was sold out, but all the seats are not occupied, so apparently some of those with fresh hairdos <laughs> didn't want to come and risk them. Too cold for some of them. <laughs> Killeen's kick. Well, he hit six of them last week against California, and none were returned, and he starts out on the same note again today against Arizona State. Arizona State Sun Devils from their 20 yard line trailing seven to nothing here in the first quarter Andrew Walter back to throw has time throws has a man downfield that's tipped by one of the Trojan defenders to Tupu the middle linebacker he's 25 yards down the field he slapped that pass away from the intended receiver Zach Miller Miller was behind the linebackers and could have made something big happen had to Tupu not been there. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. We'll show you the zone coverage here. Here's Burks. Here's Williams. Bush comes out of the backfield and splits the two of them perfectly. Burks knows he's coming, looks for him, but the pass is perfect. Touchdown SC. Second down and 10 for the Sun Devils. They'll run it. It is Rudy Burgess. And the Sun Devils like to think of Burgess, who's a redshirt freshman out of the Edwards Air Force Base area up here in California, brought down by Mike Patterson. That's a mismatch. He's 175 pounds, and Mike's 290 at least. But they wanted uh, Burgess to sort of become their Reggie Bush because he can do a lot of things, return kicks, play tailback, and also fill the slot as a wide receiver. 45-yard drive, eight plays by USC here in the first quarter to take the seven to nothing lead on the 10 yard pass line at the bush. Arizona State trying to generate some offense now on third down and 10 from the 20. Passes away. The pass is caught. This time the tight end uh, Miller is able to get his hands on it and he will have a first down just over the 30 to the 31 yard line. Now a moment with our studio in New York. Keith and the Taco Bell update. Follow this one. Jason Campbell to Cadillac Williams. To Courtney Taylor, he flips it back to Campbell, 67 yards to Devin Arumashadu, who takes it the rest of the way for the touchdown. Auburn's headed a field goal and a 10 0 lead. Auburn Tigers are, their schedule eases some as they go along toward the end of it, too, I think. Tennessee win was huge for them. Walters pass just beyond the reaching hands of Bowie Mutz. Mutz coming down on a outside slant and just didn't quite have the foot speed to track it down. But those of you who watched uh, the great performance by Aaron Rodgers of Cal last week see a real difference in how Arizona State with very little success so far is trying to attack this too deep SC defense. The key to this defense is the depth and we've already seen it in this last drive of the middle linebacker Lofa Tutupu how deep he gets really is the key Rudy Burgess is your single back now he's that freshman with the good speed Walter back to throw it drops it off to Burgess and he's got a first down Ooh. oh maybe not close to it because Darnell Bing who has returned to action from a shoulder injury hit him stood him up and took him down right on the marker and it is just barely a first down and if there's any question about the health of number 20 Darnell Bing this should answer it watch this hit as Burgess not only goes down he goes backwards and Bing stays on his feet. But it is the first first down of the ball game for the Sun Devils and Hakeem Hill checks back in. While they go get the butterflies out of the helmet of Rudy. And Walter goes down the middle. He's got Hagen. Derek Hagen, a junior from Palmdale, hauls it in at the Southern California 38 yard line. 
First down Arizona State. Now we talked how Andrew Walter had only been sacked eight times in the five previous games. He's getting better protection as this first quarter is going on. He gets so deep he allows Hagen to run a real sharp route and get separation from Justin Wyatt. Two steps into the break. The ball's on the way. Another first down for the Sun Devils. 840 to go in the first quarter at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Burgess back in the ball game steps up to throw a block almost got trampled but the pass is away and completed again to Derek Hagan. Hagan 6 to 201 pounds not a burner exactly but he's got got speed but he is very good at running his routes. And you saw the arm strength of Andrew Walter he threw that ball backing up never did quite set his feet but had enough strength on that uh, pass to get it to his wide receiver. Two record 635th completion and he moves past Jake Plummer in that category so he's literally going to own every mark in the book for a quarterback by the time this season is done. Hands the ball away and the running back Hill who's a 219 pounder that's J.D.'s son and he hits it over the left side and he's is right about the 30 yard line. Well, Hakeem Hill is a big reason the Sun Devils are undefeated right now. See that cast on his right hand against the Ducks a couple weeks ago. He recorded this career long 56 yarder for a touchdown. He's showing real toughness though playing with a broken right arm. And yes he is right handed. Watch for the Trojans to try to strip him. They empty the backfield but they keep one protector back there. That would be the fullback Burgrad and uh, the ball is thrown hard. Trying to put it in between the backers to Miller, the tight end, and Tupu would have none of it. And for the third time in this ball game, Lola not Lopa knocks away another pass. I think uh, Tupu got away with pass interference on this one, as he is trying to guard and did a good job staying with number 86 right here. But watch Tupu's left arm wrap around right there. That's pass interference. Trojans get a break. Field goal attempt coming up on fourth down. Jesse Ainsworth, who's got a big leg, 47 yard try, and he's done very well this year. He's, what, 10 out of 13 on his field goal tries, but that is not going to make it. I don't know if he shanked it. Uh, somebody got a hand on it. I think Sean Cody might very well have had a hand on it because Sean was the one strutting off the field, and the field goal is no good. <laughs> That was a low kick. Kind of hit it just above the navel, actually, and it never got up enough. Somebody might have got a hand on it. You couldn't tell at the line of scrimmage, but now watch him. He's going to look back at the kicker, I mean the holder, and he's going to be like those guys, you know, walk Mr. Short Putt and then always walk over and tap down the spike marks. <laughs> I've seen you do that. <laughs> Six minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first quarter. Still 7 nothing ball game, Southern California leading. And the ball is on the 30, just inside the 30 for the Trojans and the beginning of this possession. Lindale White is in the backfield, line it throws, and it is tipped away. That is a good defensive play by Emmanuel Franklin Archie. Well, Manny Arch. Manny Franklin Archie. Or let's just call him Emmanuel Franklin, okay? <laughs> Former cornerback and uh, showing his bad hands to his sidelines. He really should have picked this one off because uh, the ball was kind of just floating down the field for Dwayne Jarrett. Big misplay there, miss opportunity for the Sun Devils. I suspect that Leinert might have taken a bit of a lick too as that one was let go. This team goes after the quarterback. They really put some heat on them because they come hard. This play goes into the middle for Lindale White. He took one step right, came right back up the pipe and got a good block and uh, got a big gain out of it, about eight yards. It was Matua who threw the key block for him Monday night. Al Michaels and John Madden are in St. Louis down by the river for another edition of Monday Night Football. John Gruden bringing his Buccaneers into town to take them against Marshall Falk, Mark Bolger and company, and the Rams and their airborne troops. Monday Night Football is at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. And I'll tell you what, those Rams had the biggest 
burglary case I have ever seen the other night against the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, they surprised the Seahawks Ooh. with uh, that speed, and they are built for that uh, artificial surface, aren't they? Those great wide receivers. Mm. Quick passing from Mark Bulger. A lot of good games have been played between those two teams. All right, third down and two here. And Mitchell is in at a wide receiver spot, and Leinert still throwing, and he's got a man out here, and he overthrows David Kirkman, the fullback, coming out of the backfield. So that was a pretty wide miss, as a matter of fact. Yeah, because uh, the linebacker, Jamar Williams, was in the throwing lane, forced Leinert to lob it over the top. Here's number four. Watch him take out. He's beaten right here, but he's in the throwing lane. That causes the ball to be thrown too far. And it brings in the punter, Tom Malone. Randy Burgess goes back, standing all the way back on his 15. So Randy's giving uh, Tom some room here, isn't he? But then Malone is a pretty good kicker. Rudy Burgess is watching it go into the end zone. Well, that's why he was back there. Malone's uh, average is better than 44 yards per punt, and this one just traveled 62 yards. That equals his longest and now we've got a penalty flag on the field so let's see what that's all about. And barely any breeze so he didn't get much help out of the wind on that the ball, the flag is thrown up around the 45 of Arizona State. He got a holding call and it's going against the Sun Devils. Was that holding or was that fist yep. open. Now nah, it's holding, it's holding. Uh, on the gunner on the outside trying to keep him from getting down and bothering Burgess but with that punt Burgess had no shot here it is right here. That's Manny Franklin number 13 working on John Walker. Must be. Uh, looks good so far maybe it's not on the, that player right there but that's the area where the flag was thrown. So at six minutes to go in the first quarter we've got a timeout with Southern California leading seven to nothing. The average starting field position in three times uh, of possession for Arizona State is right around the 15 yard line. They'll start this time from their 10 after that holding call was half the distance to the goal line. And uh, so far they've they've been able to move the ball one time. They get it down to the 30 yard line on the SC side before they tried a 47 yard field goal that failed. Now they come out again and Drew Walter the quarterback and they've been using uh, Rudy Burgess at tailback along with uh, Hakeem Hill of course who was that is the starter and he's in there right now and it's Walter back gets a little bit of heat they get him to move around some he completes the pass up the field to Derek Hagan that's the second catch of uh, Derek Hagan today the point made in conversation with him earlier this week USC coach Pete Carroll said this about working his defense against Andrew Walter. He's exactly uh, the kind of guy you need to pressure him it, it, well, you know, or if, you're, if you don't, he's going to sit back there. They're doing a really nice job with their play action game, and he's miles away from the line of scrimmage, you know, and, and he looks like he's standing all by himself out there. That's a very dangerous situation for us. Linebackers and the, the guys who do the blitz and they get the huffing and puffing, uh, especially the big guys in the middle who have to travel that distance. But this time the big guys in the middle swelled up and stopped Hakeem Hill. It was Patterson and Cody and company as he tried to go over the left side. And there was not much there on 17 yard lines where it's marked. Here's John again with an update from New York. <laughs> Keep the Verizon Wireless update this time. In the Big Ten, Ohio State 0-2 already, and Iowa strikes first against them. Drew Tate, the Clinton Solomon, the Hawkeyes lead 7-0. Keith. Thank you, John. Third down now, and two. Knocked away by Eric Wright. Eric Wright, who's playing more and more. He's a freshman out of San Francisco. He's worked that time against Derek Hagan. And he made a real veteran move here. Got his left hand on the ball. There he is right here. Watch how he keeps that right hand from hooking. Or did he not hook? <laughs> I think he had the right hand on Hagen. Hagen thought so too. But almost blocked. 
Not a very good kick. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 49 yard line or midfield. Midfield's where they'll put it down. And there the Trojans will have it again in the middle of the field. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. So once again, USC's defense does its job, keeps them penned, and forces the punt. And uh, Arizona State's kicker was McDonald lucky to get it out as well as he did. Because there were people in his face. Liner hands the ball away into the middle to Lindale White. White is a 6'2", 235-pound sophomore out of Denver. So he wears pretty well running in the middle. But you can see that time, Keith, the Reggie Bush was lined up as a wide receiver, motion back towards the formation, and after the handoff to Lundell White, Leinert fake as if uh, a reverse might be in the offing. Here's Bush coming in motion. He's a little bit late, but there's the fake. So look for a reverse some port point in this game. Gain four yards, second down and six at the 46 of Arizona State. Stand up quick pop goes outside to Bush that ball looked to me like it was going backwards if that's the case this will be a rush for Bush and he picks up the first down at the 39 yard line of Arizona State he broke the tackle of Josh Golden. Uh, here's Bush right here working against Golden. That is a, a backwards pass so it will go down as a rush I believe first down for SC. But Reggie Bush showing his quickness and strength to get pick it up. Weighs 200 pounds. He ain't a gimme. First down. Big hole in there. And again, it's Lindale White carrying down to about the 31. He was a step away from being gone. We talked about these linebackers Robinson Burks and Williams. They're really downhill tacklers. They they want to come at the line of scrimmage. But there's always hesitation when you play SC because SC does so many things out wide. That time it was a run blitz the perfect call for SC against that type of defense. Leonard again hands it away to the big back and Lindale White is close to the first down depends on where where the foot goes down for it'll be third down and about um, it was third and two so a long two and they'll bring the chains on to see whether or not uh, White picked it up you know when you talk about linebackers uh, tackling downhill Oh, Lindale White runs downhill, so that translated means you've got a collision. We have, we may have a few uh, <laughs> thumper busters, you yes, bet. Sir. But I like the moves that uh, White showed that time to avoid that collision and pick up the first down. It's about two inches good on the first down. You know, he's operating on a tender left ankle, but that time it didn't seem to bother him at all. White goes out of the ball game now and uh, Reggie White comes back in with others and that means uh, the whole aspect of the Trojan offense is just switched that quickly as they go to single back and three wide outs and spread the defense. This is Bush. With a little help from his pals, he just keeps on thumping along. And uh, when it looked like he was going to go down after very little, wound up with about six yards. And Jimmy Verdun will get the principal tackle on the play for the Sun Devils. Real good patience by Bush. You know, with his mentality, he's looking for the big play every time. But he realizes right about now that uh, he's got a pretty good thing going because his offensive line are five yards down the field. Just get in right behind him and pick up about six. If you thought you saw number one down in the melee at defensive tackle, you did. His name is Jordan Hill, and he is, in fact, number one, a, a number that he brought over from a linebacker position. But 
He grew out of the linebacker spot. Liner drops the ball. Man chasing him. He steps away. Throws it now and has a man outside Alex Holmes. Alex makes the catch. Goes on down the sidelines and makes it first and goal at the Arizona State nine yard line. Yeah, Pete can smile because he's got a, a quarterback who kept his head on that play. A lot of times that that the ball goes on the ground and then there's a panic. It's going to be a play action pass so Leonard knows he can throw this ball after he gets it back in his hands. Takes a shot there from Burks and what a catch by Alex Holmes to bail his quarterback out and set the Trojans up first and goal. All this happening at 126 to go in the first quarter. Glendale White is back in. He and Bush are both behind uh, the quarterback. And Leinert looking to throw it close to White. White pounds to the goal line and into the end zone touchdown. There's that bubble screen type of action they were working on in practice as Reggie Bush goes down and sucks him away and Lindale is happy. Yeah, it's quite a vacuum that Bush creates. Watch, he goes straight down the field and then White will come out right in his spot there with the convoy in front of him. Reggie, turn around, block somebody. Touchdown, SC. He's saving his fingers. Killeen for the point and flags fly. So there must have been contact along the line of scrimmage to draw that many pieces of laundry. So, so much for missing Steve Smith. Matt Liner's thrown two touchdown passes, one to Dead Reggie ball, Bush, now one to Lendell White. Five yard penalty. They are not, however, going to those wide out. Chris McFoy at 6'1", 195, and uh, Dwayne Jarrett. James Jarrett had a chance to make a catch, and the ball went right through his hand at 6'5", a freshman. Dilatini. They're just getting their feet wet. The punter Malone holds the ball. Ooh, high snap. Gets it down all right and kicks up and good. So it's 14 to nothing. Southern California leading the Arizona State Sun Devils at 110 to go in the first quarter. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT and interact on Enhanced TV now at ESPN.com. That was Matt Leinert's 50th career touchdown pass. In just 19 starts. Or 18 starts in one quarter. Andrew Walter came into this game with 70 touchdown passes in his uh, career at Arizona State. He's been prolific too. At the goal line, it's Rudy Burgess. And he took a left turn and uh, turned out there wasn't any way to come back from it. And he is short of the 20 yard line. It'll be Arizona State ball at their 17. As we come back to the floor of the Coliseum, Lotha Tatupu just stepped in from his line, middle linebacker position and made the tackle at the 15 yard line, a loss of two yards on the play. So the Trojan defense, Arizona State hasn't had a, a lick of luck so far either. They've been playing most of the game down inside their 20 yard line. And they've had no success at all rushing the ball against SC. And when you don't run the ball, this uh, defense of SC is going to eventually get to the quarterback. One yard rushing so far for ASU. That's Burgess in motion. He comes on out as a wide out. Andrew Walter back. Push. And they hold him up in the middle this time. Give him some time. And he finally finds Zach Miller. That's Miller's second catch. And we've come to the end of the first quarter of play. 14 to nothing, USC leading. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. The Arizona State offense has been literally stifled in the first quarter of play by the USC defense, and the Trojans are up by a score of 14 to nothing. And the Arizona State defense coming into today averaging giving up just 12.8 points per game 14 Trojan points in that first quarter so nothing going right for the Sun Devils. 
They come quickly to the field now and up onto the ball and here we go with Hakeem Hill as the single back and that's Hagen in motion. Eric has caught a couple already and Andrew Walter back throws to him again. And Hagen makes the catch and uh, steps out of bounds and there's a penalty flag on the field. Thrown by the umpire perhaps the offensive line. holding you betcha. Huge mistake on third down. They pick up the first down. Now they're going to be backed up with a third and about 13. What is that? You betcha stuff. We don't live in Minnesota, North Dakota. <laughs> Our officials are Larry Farina, the referee. Dennis Angel is the umpire. Robert Beal, the headlinesman. And the line judge, Blake penalty. Lozo. Replay Bernard Samuels, down. the side judge. Brian O'Kane, the field judge. And the back judge is Michael Aronian. It was Mike Pollock. Who had to make a position shift just before the game today? Who was for holding? So the king of colloquialism <laughs> is telling me I can't say you betcha. <laughs> no, uh -huh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 14 yard line, third down. It's sports vernacular. <laughs> Rudy Burgess is the single back. Moe Mutz lined up on the wrong side of the formation. Now Walter has got to burn a timeout. This does not look like an undefeated football team. 14-33 to play in the first half. Third down and 13 now as we get cranked up here in the first minute of the second quarter of play. Southern California leading 14 to nothing. Arizona State trying to sh shake the bottle and find the genie here. Get something going. Single back is Burgess. Walters pass down the middle is caught by his tight end Zach Miller across the 30 to the 32. First down for the Devils. Zach Miller is a true freshman, 18 years old. He's 6'4", 250, and his teammates have nicknamed him the truth because all the hype about him coming out of high school that he's the one of the best college players coming out was all true. And this is why. Looking to make that catch, turn, absorb the lick, pick up the first down for the Sun Devils. And big play. Bing, who did it too, Dan. Yeah, second big hit for Bing. Hakeem Hill is the single back for the Devils. Walter rolls and throws. It's caught again by Miller. Zach Miller turning into the big offensive threat now for Arizona State here in this first half of play. That's another first down at the 46. And here's Todd. Happy to be here with two legends, Ronnie Lott and Mr. Pat Tillman Sr. And the defensive award this year will be called the Lott Trophy. And Ronnie, when did they approach you about this and, and your thoughts? Well, uh, first of all, they approached me this offseason. And my thoughts are, it's pretty simple. It, to be able to know that you're going to have an award that's going to make an impact in the community is the most important thing. As we give away an honorary trophy today to Pat Tillman, the memory of him, it couldn't have gone to a better athlete. Exactly. And, it, and, and I can tell you for sure, that's what he did. He made an impact on a lot of people's lives. And he will continue to do that. I think that's what's great. We've been able to see it for a long, long time in the Bay Area. He continues to do it. And we hope that... Uh, and Matthew returns it down to the Arizona State 19-yard line before they can bring down the outside linebacker. Just a terrible decision by Andrew Walter. He stared down his wide receiver the whole way. There were three Trojans around his intended target there. Matt Grudegood picking up his fourth interception of the year. Here it is, Derek Hagan doubled by Arbet and Grudegood, and this ball is thrown right to Grudegood. Walter stared him from the very outset. Now watch Walter whiff on the tackle right about there as he goes flying into the stands. So all in all, a bad play. Well, for Walter, as a senior, just his second pick of the year, but that one he'll really regret. And his first down Trojans at the Arizona State 19 yard line. And they line up Bush on the outside. Leinert's pass to the corner. Touchdown, Dwayne Jarrett. Touchdown. 
That's the Trojan killer instinct. After a turnover, go for the touchdown on the very first play. Matt Leinert now with three touchdowns here in the first half. Just a beautiful pass to Dwayne Jarrett on the post corner from the slot position. Jarrett's a long strider. Look how wide open he is. He's the teenager playing wide up. Moved up to become a starter when Steve Smith broke his leg last week in the California game. The kick by Colleen is good. And it's 21 to nothing, Southern California, with 13 21 to play in the first half. We're at the Coliseum in Los Angeles on a cool, gray, rainy like afternoon. No rain yet. 21 to nothing ball game in Los Angeles. I would punctuate that score as you see it by reminding you that the very first BCS poll of the season will come out Monday. And when do the Heisman ballots go out? Uh, Matt Leinert's thrown 10 passes, completed six. Three of those six were scores. They come out in November, late November, or middle of November. Ryan Colleen set the kick off. Well, we'll get a return. Yeah, he's about five yards deep in the end zone. He tried one from five yards deep, and he didn't make it back to the 15, so he decided to take it at the 20. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. TIAA Cref Financial Services for the Greater Good and AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. The Arizona State Sun Devils beleaguered at least, starting again from their 20. Walter back, wide open, nobody pressuring him. Throws to the near side, and the pass is completed to Hakeem Hill, who had to come back for the ball and makes the catch at the 26 for a six yard gain. And makes the catch uh, falling down, so no chance for additional yardage because he can catch that ball standing up, moving down the field, break a tackle. He might be all the way out to midfield, but the pass led him to the ground. Hagan now comes to this side. And Terry Richardson, who has yet to see the ball, number 17, is on the top of your picture. Coming back toward the ball now on the long count. Trouble in River City there. Very slow play developing. I don't know, it was uh, Walter and uh, Hill kind of got mixed up or ran together. And by then, that defensive front was all over. Yeah, it appeared Walter was changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Maybe have gotten a late snap from his center, but uh, that execution is inexcusable for the sixth game of the year. So the ball comes back to the 20, and it's third down and 10. Passes away, complete to Zach Miller again. And he has been the big receiver. That's five catches for him. But he is short of the first down by three and a half or so. And that'll bring out the kicking team. The very frustrated quarterback, Andrew Walter, right now. His running game now minus seven yards for the Sun Devils on the ground. Reggie Bush waiting. Got two guys to get away from back there. Got away from both of them, but in the process was slowed down sufficiently. The ball came out for a moment, and the Sun Devils were diving for it, and they got it. Yes, they do. Reggie Bush has the ball get away from him as he goes down, and it's been called a fumble, I believe. And one official indicated early on uh, Arizona State ball. Yeah, the beanbag came out early. And that signifies that the ball is loose. So there's the official confirmation. Reggie Bush with his first fumble of the year on a punt. Great move to get away from three Sun Devils there. But now he's going to be struggling for extra yardage. 
got to know to go down right about here because the third man in will punch it loose. Ishmael thrower. And so the Devils finally get a break. They make a break. They didn't get a break. They made it. And they knocked the ball loose, and it's first down at the Southern California 33-yard line. And obviously that is their best field position. Far and away. But now what do you do with it? You've got to get a score on this drive. Plenty of time left in the first half. 11 9 It's a 21-nothing ball game, Southern California. Empty backfield pressure coming. Eric Wright blitzing off the corner and brought him down back up near the 40. That's Pete Carroll di dialing up another perfect defensive call. Nobody in the backfield to protect for Andrew Walter. So the corner, Eric Wright comes and drops him. Last year, Ronald Nunn got a big sack on Walter in Tempe on a similar type of situation. So many types of defenses, different blitzing schemes. Pete Carroll is the best. Second down, 17. Pete Carroll is the defensive coordinator for the Trojans, in case you don't know that. Ball thrown over the head of Hagen and out of bounds, incomplete. You got another flag down. And uh, Dirk Cutter, the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, is the offensive coordinator for that team. Illegal motion against uh, the Sun Devils, so they continue to be their own Illegal worst motion. enemy. Offense number 80. Penalties declined. Third down. You know, Keith, we talked about how Norm Chow Three has that killer 17. instinct with the touchdown pass to Jarrett. Well, after the turnover, first play, Pete Carroll shows the same type of attitude, bringing the corner blitz and give, taking away all the momentum that Arizona State may have gotten with that fumble recovery. Right. Kind of hid in that corner blitz. And I'm not sure they had any clue he was over there. Came from Walter's blind side, blind too. Yep. Walter throws. This time the pass is completed to Derek Hagan. Hagan is immediately tackled by Eric Wright and dragged back, but his progress will get him inside the 30 to about the 29, I think. Looks like they're where they've marked it. But it's going to bring up a fourth down and six. Uh, check out this tackle by Eric Wright. Derek Hagan has got good size, 6'2", over 200 pounds. If he pulls away from that tackle, he picks up the first down. Solid tackle. Two good plays now on this drive for Eric Wright. Freshman, too. Good record uh, now for uh, in passing yards added to Andrew Walter's great accomplishments. Throws this one and another catch. By Zach Miller on fourth and six. What a catch. And he may, I don't know if he's got the first down or not. I'll let the folks wearing the striped shirts tell us, and they say yes. Ball's on the 23. Good timing by Walter. Blitz from SC. Catching the back half of that ball, looking it in not only to his body, but right to his face. Making sure of that catch. What a play by the freshman. Darnell Bing was battling with it. You can call it uh, the 22. Ball's closer to that hash mark. And it's first down. So they're trying to recover from that big sack. And they did. Walter wants to go deep down the middle, throws high, and it's incomplete. It's, this one was intended for Terry Richardson. So first time today Terry had seen it. And he's a speedster, a sophomore, 6'1", 185 pounds, out of Corona, California. Now it's just another forced job by Andrew Walter. Just three receivers out. The Sun Devils anticipating a blitz, kept their backs and tight ends in for extra protection. But Walter, lucky that one wasn't picked off by Bing. Give it a hill. And Hakeem will get it inside the 20 down near the 17 yard line. Providing aerial coverage for today's broadcast is Freedom, the AmeriQuest mortgage airship. Pilot Scott Daniker and the cameraman aboard is Aaron Fitzgerald. There it is. Third and five. 
Nice home day. Third down and five. Burgess single back. Richardson in motion. Walter shopping. Passes away. Passes completed to Terry Richardson. He's inside the five and down to the two. First and goal, Arizona State. And the one thing you always say about Terry Richardson is how quick he is and how explosive he can be with the ball in his hands after the catch. Reads the zone coverage, just settles down in a void, and then breaks two tackles to get this one real close to the goal line. Jason Leach is the man that had the best shot at him, and he rolled right off it. And Leach is a solid tackler. Hill the single back. And this time you got the fullback Burgraff lined up in front of him. Up the middle, pounding into the end zone. Touchdown, Sun Devil. Hakeem Hill. That's a pretty good sized group of uh, Sun Devil faithful over there and uh, by the tunnel. There they are. This is just a classic blast play with the fullback, Burgraff, leading right into this hole. Watch the double team here. Just a lot of beef, a lot of power. Hodgson gets off on Mike Patterson, and basically what happened to SC is Manuel Wright ran himself right out of the hole. The point by Ainsworth is good. And now the Sun Devils life must look a little better for them at 749 to go in the first half. It's now a 21 to 7 ball game as they turn Reggie Bush's fumble into their first score of the ball game. A soft 65 66 degree kind of an afternoon in Los Angeles. No sun sun's behind the. Uh, Whatever they call that ocean layer. Here come Reggie Bush and uh, Desmond Reed are the deep people for the Trojans. Jesse Ainsworth will kick it off for oh, Arizona State. Sun Devils just scored to make it a 21 to 7 ball game, and this is Desmond Reed. He's got some quick. He comes back across the 25, and there's a penalty flag. That I thought might have been a face mask grab. I'm a long way away from where it happened. It's a hold, and it's called against Southern California. So back to back special teams plays for the Trojans. The Bush fumble, and now on a kickoff, holding will back the Trojans up deep in their own end of the field. Special teams won that game for them last week as much as anybody. That's right. Particular the kick place Holding kicker. 49 of the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Southern California. Now, time for our Pacific Life game summary. First drive of the game for SC. Matt Leinert's going to find Reggie Bush for a 10 yard touchdown reception right over the middle. And then on two drives later, Lendell White will go in from nine yards out. How about after the Grudega interception, Dwayne Jarrett gets this 19-yard touchdown pass, his fourth of the year. 21-7 as the Devils just responded. And the Trojans start at their own 14-yard line for this possession with Lindale White trying the left side, and not a whole lot of stuff there for him on that play. Maybe two yards. At seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. SC led 14 nothing into the first quarter and here in the second quarter each has scored a touchdown. SC not showing any of the ill effects of missing their go to receiver Steve Smith. Matt Liner has thrown 13 touchdown passes this season. Seven of them have been to his running backs five to Bush and two to White. So that's Norm Chow finding where his best players are and getting them the ball. Reggie Bush is down there at the bottom of the screen. You see that uh, cornerback's right up in his face. Ball's thrown for him. Tracks it down. Out of bounds. Up around midfield at the 49 yard line. Josh Golden just simply could not run with him. See, that, was, that was a great pickup on your part because there's very few corners in college football that can stay up with Reggie Bush. The quick move. Freezes Golden at the line of scrimmage, and now another perfect touch pass by Lyon right on the fingertips of Bush. 
quick move jab step to the inside and that's just pure speed. 35 yard pickup on the play and it's first down just short of midfield for USC. Pushes out. Earn some rest. Minor's pass off the hands of Dwayne Jarrett. Jarrett may have heard the hoofbeats uh, coming toward him, and uh, good reason to, because it's Ricardo Stewart. He will make a mark on you. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Who, what? Who holds the Pac-10 single-season record for most all-purpose yards? Aflac. Go Ducks. <laughs> oh, that's a different. Oh, me. <laughs> I'm glad to be an eternal sophomore. It's fine. <laughs> Ball is thrown outside and caught by Dwayne Jarrett. Perfectly placed pass. Caught over the shoulder, indefensible, and first down USC at the 34 of Arizona State. Well, it's eight Jarrett on eight McKenzie, and eight is the key number here because at 6'5, Jarrett has eight inches on Chris McKenzie. And Matt Leiner's just on fire. He he's throwing the ball where it has to be thrown. And you can see how well Jarrett matches up against the great Mike Williams after five through five games. His numbers are right there. That's pretty high cotton company there, boy. Ball is thrown to the tight end. Look at him, Dominique Bird step away from that tackle and rumble inside the 15 yard line. Down to the 12. He just ran right through Ricardo Stewart. Dominique Bird is 6'3, 260. So he's a load when he gets going, and he's had a lot of trouble getting himself healthy. Yeah, he's coming off a broken kneecap. This is his first catch of the season. Here he is on the left side of the screen. A little misdirection for SC. You can see how it sucked in the linebacker there, Dale Robinson, who's not been a factor so far today. Now well, that'll get a penalty flag because the defender McKenzie knocked down the would be receiver Jarrett and the ball was thrown by Leinart where he figured Jarrett would be he's tried to play jump ball again against McKenzie and the flag was thrown. You can see Cutter say that ball was catchable and I agree with them that ball was landed six to seven yards beyond the field of play. Look at the height difference there, that eight inches there. That's what gets the call as he knocks him down, but where's the ball? Not even in the picture. That's not pass interference. That's good defense. You can't just up and knock him down. Yes, you can. You can, you can knock him down. Before the, the chart, ball is yeah. thrown, absolutely. And that's a quarterback talking. You believe that? An old quarterback talking. Oh, I heard it. <laughs> How many quarterbacks have I had over the years? One, two, three, four. <laughs> There'll be a few more down the road. You, should, you can be better than that. Sure. <laughs> First down. Play goes into the middle, and there's some power there as Lindale White rumbles along, and Dale Robinson, who is the, who's been a sensation defensively for Arizona State so far this season. Came from Glendale City College, native son of Queens, out of New York City. But he and McKenzie were pals, and McKenzie came out to Arizona State, and, he, and uh, Robinson came over to Glendale. And, and Dirk Cutter said that uh, McKenzie was in his ear all the time about his buddy over there at Glendale. They went over and had a look and said, "Holy cow, come on!" This is White down to the one-yard line. He did graduate, incidentally, in case you wondered about that from Glendale. Ball is on the one yard line now for Southern California. And they, they appear to be unstoppable. Liner with the hot hand, the misdirection type of plays, and then the, just a straight ahead John McCade slash John Robinson style of football, giving the ball to the tailback and letting him power in for the score. Ball ain't heavy and he don't belong to no union. Into the middle it goes. Sun Devils hunker down, stand him up. Matt Leinert, the quarterback, and it's a touchdown by the hair of his chinny chin chin. So USC 
gets a big play out of Reggie Bush from the 14 to 16 yard line up to the 50 and then from then on uh, they made it look pretty easy as they stuck it in the end zone. Reiner coming off holding his left shoulder as he scored on that quarterback sneak his third score of the year rushing. Colleen is in for the point. It's good. At 5.08 to go in the first half, we've got 28-7, Southern California leading Arizona State. Matt Leinert's on the bench. They've been kind of working with his neck and uh, as to whether or not it's a stinger. We don't know how severe, but it's, it, frankly, you can't tell from this picture whether he scored or not. I didn't. I might have argued uh, loudly if I'd been uh, down there on the other side, but nonetheless, it was called a touchdown, and so be it. Looks like Jamar Mill Williams may have caused that injury to uh, Leinert's neck as uh, Colleen kicks another one to El Segundo. It just seems to me that, yeah, he, he's really having a good two weeks here kicking that ball. That the, if Leinert goes down, the Trojans are, there's a weakness exposed right there. No, there's no question. Huge. He's completed passes today to seven different receivers, but uh, that's because he's experienced in this offense. Not a good sign as they're working on his neck. At the conclusion of today, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Here's Arizona State with the ball. First down at the 20-yard line. They're trailing again by 21 points as Andrew Walter gets some heat. Little shovel pass forward. It's tipped off one of the Trojans and caught by somebody laying on the ground. Burgraff, they fall back, so he would be an eligible receiver, so it should be a completed pass for two yards. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet making a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. There's Matt Leinert laying down. Getting some treatment on his neck. And that's on the it's the the uh, stinger if it is that uh, whatever is on the left hand side of the neck. And that's the area of his throwing shoulder throwing on. Walters ball tipped at the line of scrimmage again. That's two in a row that's been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Tatupu makes a dive trying to pick it off. His right tipped it. Didn't quite get to it. As if this hasn't been a frustrating enough day for Andrew Walter, nothing will get into a quarterback's craw more than a deflected pass at the line of scrimmage, especially when that quarterback is 6'5", taller than any of the guys that are rushing against him. Except Manuel. Two six six, and on the bench. Now <laughs> he's playing with a brace on his right arm, and it's incomplete. It was into the hands of that big freshman tight end Zach Miller, but he was hit just as the ball arrived by Dallas Sarts, and Sarts is a pretty tough customer himself, and the ball comes out. And even if Zach Miller had been able to catch it, he would have been two yards shy of the first down. So back comes Chris McDonald for his fourth punt of the day. That's great coverage by Sarts. Fair catch. That's the second one today by Bush. All right, we ask you about the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the Pac-10 single season record for most all-purpose yards? You don't know what all-purpose yards are? I'm not sure I do either. Marcus Allen, however, at 2,559 is the holder of that record. Southern California, 1981. That's running, catching, kick returning, and all that stuff all added up into a sum. And running for the lunch counter, probably, too. All right, Leinert comes out at quarterback, looking fit enough. Going to throw it. Throws it off to Dom Dominic Bird. And Bird fighting. That's the way you lose the ball, though. When you've got a lot of people around you, they're trying to grab the ball and strip it, and you keep fighting for that extra yard. Sometimes it comes out. Yeah, but Bird wants to show he can play a little tight end, too. Hasn't seen the ball but twice on the entire year, both in this first half. The big guy lined up right, coming in motion, rather. Again, the misdirection. Leinert looks okay on that pass, but it only traveled seven yards. Second down and two. Reggie Bush. 
deep back gets the ball disappears in the crowd and he's a yard short of the first down. The middle defense for Arizona State is held up pretty well though actually all things considered getting some help uh, Justin Burks when they went to a 4 3 defense I mean he fit in there like uh, he was had been made for it. he is a prototypical middle linebacker Lindale White comes in now it's third down and a short one. Whole lot there, but enough. Sort of slanted it away from the middle and found the crack. Coming up on the Valvoline halftime show, John Craig Aaron highlights analysis from today's big games. The primary pursuer of these uh, Southern California Trojans, Oklahoma, will be the object of their discussion, I'm sure, to a large degree, because they just they had to fight for their life for a while down in Manhattan, Kansas today. And then at the same time, you're sitting here watching the number one team uh, sort of sort of on cruise right now. Yeah, four touchdowns on their five possessions in this first half. Oh, coming around. Bush is going to throw it. He's got a man wide open. Jarrett. It's now a foot race to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. No flag. Oh, Norm Chow has picked their pocket on that one. Brilliant play call, perfect execution by the Trojans. I didn't know he could throw it that good, Keith. We saw him in practice, it worked just about the same way, but it's when you call plays. Perfect time at midfield. The fake, here's the reverse. Look at the Sun Devils coming up on number five. And Jarrett, watch him open up this long stride as he gets into the end zone easily. Point. Stopped by the flags. 52-yard touchdown pass. That does not count, incidentally, for all-purpose yards. <laughs> Throwing doesn't count. <laughs> you know, ASU in their first five games this year, they only allowed 26 points total. Dead ball, offside, defense number in 91. The first half. half 35 goal, repeat coming. Repeat the try. Ball goes down uh, half the distance, yard and a half away from the goal line. They're still going to kick it. Is Bush going to kick it? <laughs> no. He pulled a groin. <laughs> and Colleen again, right on the money. So at 2.15 to go in the first half, it's now Southern California 35, Arizona State 7 after this play yard line for Arizona State 35 7 now USC Todd are you still with us all right Keith we'll have that exciting return by Matt Grudiger. we're just about to talk to Mr. Pat Tillman senior his son of course Pat Tillman who we lost in Afghanistan in the line of duty and I was talking to you moments ago your reaction when Pat said he was turning his back on the NFL and was going to join the army after what happened in 9 11 well Pat didn't tell me his brother Kevin did and it was after they'd already done it. So Kevin calls up and says, what do you think about us, uh, about us joining the uh, Army Rangers? And I said, uh, you guys already did it. He said, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea. And that's the kind of boys they were. That's the kind of boys they are. Exactly. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. And we uh, thank you for your son and his sacrifice on all our behalf. Well, I appreciate the recognition. Thank you. Keith, Pat Tillman, Sr. Yeah, Pat looked a little like him now. He's, uh, he's quite Pat Tillman's quite a fellow. I, I know that a lot of you don't know him and never had a chance to be around him or be acquainted with him. But I think everybody that ever walked with him or walked in his shadow uh, thinks a lot of him because he represented a lot of good things. And tough. I mean, he was tough. Well, he made his mark on special teams in the NFL. <laughs> And of course, uh, Sun Devil fans remember him as a linebacker, and you know you got to be tough to play there. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Arizona State trying to start something now. It's on second down from the 25, ball thrown to the outside, right on the money. And Moy Mutz makes the catch, and that'll move the chains. Ball was caught and taken out of bounds at the 34 yard line. A minute and 28 seconds to go in the first half. Coming up on the Valvoline halftime show, John Craig Aaron, you know what they do at halftime. I keep waiting for John to pick up the five string banjo, but he hasn't yet. He's done everything else and works incredible hours. First down on the 34. They got him spread out. Walter getting some heat. Down he goes way back inside the 25 yard line. Sean Cody with the quarterback sack. Cody brought him down two and a half times last year in Tempe and uh, Walter very desperately trying to pull away from Cody but uh, look at the strength in Cody as he just grabs onto that jersey he's not going to let go Arizona State is called a timeout the ball is put down on the 27 yard line which was the most advanced point of the possession by Andrew Walter before Sean Cody wrestled him down. Minute 15 to go in the first half. <laughs> Clouds getting a little heavier. The weather forecast in Southern California area is for some rain later on this evening. It'd be nice if it waited until I got to the comfort of the garage. Uh, it's raining on the uh, Sun Devils that's for sure what a first half performance by this entire SC football team you know the only black mark was the uh, fumble on the special teams by Reggie Bush everything else offensively defensively it's just been perfect. However there's still a half to go and uh, Arizona State's offense is, is run by what I called him the Gatling gun the way he can throw the ball downfield. And uh, if the Trojans get a little sleepy in the second half, they can catch up. Yeah, but there's no balance for ASU. They've thrown it for 155 yards. They've rushed for a negative four. Can't beat the number one no, team in the country not like gonna, that. Not going to win games with that kind of those kind of numbers. Not against these guys. Either. That ball is incomplete. Is it was thrown in the middle of the field for Matt Miller. Who is a junior flanker, wideout? Broken up by Mike Patterson. Mike Patterson gets the call on the play. Now he is a no stack. He's in the middle of the melee, and he rolled out of there and uh, had the sense of where the play might be going and knocked it down. The old Mike. He dropped out at, from a defensive tackle spot in a zone coverage and was in the right spot at the right time. 290 pounds on a six foot frame. He does fill the door. From the 27, third down and 17. And Rudy Burgess is run out of bounds at the 30, and that is well short of anything close to a first down. Now, we got a little bit of a chuckle yesterday talking to Dirk Gutter, asked him about Rudy Burgess. He says, You mean the real RB? <laughs> As in the real deal compared to Reggie Bush, well, perhaps not, Dirk. Not today. Not yet. Not in this first half. Beautiful kick by McDonald. Makes the catch. That man's right in his face. He made the catch. Got away from another one. Got away from another one. Getting a little help now on the blocking. Look out. Look out. One man. Two men. Stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. That first man, Chris McDonald, the punter, got just enough push on him to send him to the chalk, and the linesman running with the play saw it and marked it right there, 34-yard line. Yeah, but don't stop the highlight reel. Let it roll <laughs> all the way to the end zone. That's right. What an effort by Bush. The return was set up for the other side of the field. He's supposed to bring it back this way. He cuts back against the grain and then turns on the Jets. And let's see if, in fact, he goes out of bounds. Yep, right there. Yep, right foot out of bounds. What an effort by Reggie Bush. And you can't draft him. No, not yet. <laughs> 41 yards. 
Talk to Mike Williams about that. Yep. He's something. Wow. He gets you out of your lanes, though, on, on that, that kick return stuff. He's got you almost every time. And he's on the field right now, and he's out there as a wide out at, toward the top of your picture when uh, our director, Derek Mobley, shows it to you. But right now, Matt Leinert says, well, let's see. We got 49 seconds. We're in the catbird seat. Let's take a little time and talk about this, and we might work something out. Oh, you know they got uh, they're going to be going for two timeouts to go. Great field position. Leinert seems to have shaken off that neck injury. The Coliseum turf is as good this season I think as I've ever seen. It. It's quite lush. Hasn't been used a whole lot apparently. And it's firm and it's hard and it really benefits the player. With the moves and speed of Reggie Bush, this uh, this uh, stadium thing flared up here in the Southern California the last couple of weeks or so. I still don't know what in the world is wrong with preserving the Peristyle Inn as a historic monument for all the things that have happened here. Blow up the rest of it, rebuild it to satisfy everybody, <laughs> yeah. and get on with it. That's not the nature of things these days. Leinert looking deep, got his man. Touchdown, Dwayne Jarrett. That's the second for young Jarrett. Don't forget the one by Reggie Bush. So he's got three. And this one, he had a lot of time to work down the middle of the field because that offensive line gave Leinert at least five seconds to throw this ball. Gets behind the safety. Emmanuel Franklin, easy score again for USC. That's three touchdowns for Jerry. And the kick is good. So Jarrett, who has stepped up in the absence of Steve Smith, there was question whether or not he had been gone from home long enough to do it, but I think you have your answer now. If he ever needed a shot of confidence, my goodness, he's had a dose. I'm surprised too, folks. Yeah, Matt Leinert has completed 11 passes out of 16 throws. And this is his fourth touchdown pass of the day. But the big story is that young fellow right there, number eight. Yeah, his uh, four <laughs> catches. He's given in the end zone three times. <laughs> four catches, 121 yards, and three touchdowns. How's that for a half? Good. For an 18 or 19 year old. Now I guess USC's six touchdowns on their seven possessions and the other one ended with a 62 yard punt by Tom Malone. And Colleen has kicked it all the way to Northridge. Oh, he, he almost kicked, kicked the goal through the upright. Yes yeah. he did. <laughs> and no that would not have counted. Here's Todd. Well, Keith, last year at this time, USC was coming up their disappointing triple overtime loss at Cal in the second quarter of their game against Arizona State. Matt Leinert was sacked and injured his knee and his ankle. Now, he sat out the remainder of the second quarter last year in Tempe, and he went into the locker room for treatment with the Trojans and Sun Devils tied at 10. Leinert told the coaches in the locker room that he wanted to finish the game and did not want to sit out the second half. He rallied the Trojans in the second half, going 7 for 14 for 158 yards and a TD, leading USC to that 37-17 win. And ever since then, this has been Matt Leinert's team. Nothing doing. Try into the middle of the line and uh, just wham. Manuel Wright took him right down. Wright, a 290 pound sophomore at 6'6 out of Compton, which is just down the road from here. But he, he's a horse. Mm. Good quickness. Beats the block right there. And with help uh, as Tatupu comes in and wipes out the fullback, solid team defense by the Trojans. Just short of the 20 yard line. Second down and 10. They're going to let the clock click away and time will expire. So after the first half of play, it's Southern California, a shocking 42 to 7 lead over Arizona State. And let's again go down to time. Well, coach, when it's clicking, it's clicking pretty good. 
Yeah, this is really sweet to see this. This is what we've been waiting for to get this feeling, you know, on both sides of the ball. I'm, just, I'm so pumped up about the offense just ripping up and down. Really exciting to see the young guys on fire out there, number eight. What have you been feeding Reggie Bush? <laughs> Reggie's he's just something. He's just magic every time. They're chanting his name when the ball's coming to him because they can't wait to see what's going to happen. Good luck in a second. Thank you. Keith. Thank you, Todd. ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ABC Sports welcomes you back to this week's BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. An astonishing halftime score of Southern California 42 and Arizona State 7. And folks, I want to tell you that uh, as part of the uh, conversation during interviews over the week and leading up to the game today, I said it was going to be a white knuckler. The last mistake loses, and it's just simply been total domination. Totally. Well, I don't feel like the Lone Ranger. After watching ASU uh, on tape, you see them beat Northwestern and uh, Iowa on the road. This is our Pacific Life game summary. Dwayne Jarrett tied a school record in that first half with three touchdown receptions. How about this one? A 52 yarder from tailback Reggie Bush, a 34 yard catcher. He had four receptions for 121 yards, all in the second quarter for the 18 year old. Take a look at the stats at halftime, and you can see the domination by SC in everything but time of possession. SC ran 32 plays in the first half, they scored six times. In other words, they scored on just about every fifth play. In college football, it has been said many times that the freshmen don't do so well until you get toward November. They play like they are totally lost and feet are tied in a sack, but November they'll take your head off. Well, here's one that's really grown in a hurry. And we start the second half with Arizona State kicking off and they kick the ball out of bounds and Southern California will take possession up around the 35 at the 35 if they want it there or they could ask that it be re kicked. But I would think they'll just take it at the 35. So that is the continuation of the kick kind of a day it has been for Arizona State. Will be placed at the it's a terrible line. kickoff First to go down. out of bounds but they were kicking to Reggie Bush if they kept it inbounds. Reggie Bush lined up all over the place in the first half. In the slot he lined up twice. In the backfield he lined up seven times. And now on this play as a wide receiver coming in motion. And what does he do with this motion? Fakes the run. Pulls up and hits Dwayne Jarrett for a 52 yard bomb. Got to play. Where is Reggie? Lindale White is the single back for this play to start the second half from the 35 yard line and picks up three yards as he runs it over the right side behind uh, Matua and Khalil the center. Ryan Khalil is the only member of that offensive front for Southern California who weighs less than 300 pounds. Uh, Latua is 370. Uh, Matua is 305 on the right side. On the left side you've got John Drake at 350 and Sam Baker at 315. Yes, the earth trembles a lot around here. Second down and seven. Ball goes back to White, and White looking to bounce it to the outside. Can't quite get there, and they'll take him down at near the 40, just over the 40 to the 41. Another update now from John in New York. Well, Keith, bad news for the Ohio State Buckeyes looking to avoid going 0-3 in the conference for the first time since 1988. Drew Tate for Iowa to Scott Chandler for a touchdown, and the Hawkeyes at home have a 17-0 lead over Ohio State. Keith. Well, the pollsters have had a hard season. Uh, they're, they're, they're being unfrocked today, aren't they? <laughs> My goodness, your penalty flags all over the place. As the liner comes away on the snap, the sun has come out bright and shiny, and we can see blue sky Part off of towards snap, Santa Monica. False start. Number 71 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Latoui moving too soon. Here's Todd Harris. 
Well, Keith, the sun is out here at the Coliseum, except over Dirt Cutter. A dark cloud hangs over the coaches. He came out of the tunnel. I talked to him. He said, you know, bottom line is we are just getting our tails kicked. He said, this is the best team we've played all year. No question about that. But they're not out scheming us. They're just out playing us. We're in the wrong place. We're making poor tackles, poor decisions. He said, top to bottom, we are just playing poor football. There is something called talent level, too. And uh, USC is as deep as anybody. I mean, they've had some serious, a lot of people. I mean, some of the real leaders are, are dinged up and sore. And these kids are, that you never heard of are stepping up and doing things. You know, it's not only talent level, Keith, but you mix that in with the uh, the heart of, and experience of being a champion. SC, I got to believe, is a little bit embarrassed in their last two games, struggling against Stanford team, and then uh, going right down to the wire last week against Cal. They came out with purpose this afternoon at number 29 you saw walking there Scott Ware who started uh, at safety but uh, when uh, Bing was hurt and now he has a crack in his foot. Low kick this time by Malone that's a tail dragger takes a good bounce for the Trojans is picked up by Burgess and look out. He almost got to the outside. He got it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line those kind of things where a receiver delays and gets the. Uh, Cover team out of its position a little bit can sometimes break it. But he got something out of it. 21 yard line. Andrew Walter. His name is all over the record book at Arizona State University. And he's adding to it almost every time he takes a step. Look at that. Yeah, not only all over it, but at the top of it. They'll be tested here in the second half down 35 points though. Those are all career passing marks that we were talking about there and everything. Ball is swung out to the left side. Rudy Burgess makes the reception and he's right about the line of scrimmage on the tackle. So that's how far Walter drops back. Now it looked like that ball moved up field but he had dropped back a good what 12 yards before he threw it. Yeah he really gets deep away from the line of scrimmage that uh, with his height long stride you can see how far back he gets but the reaction by SC one move too many as Sarts comes up and gets help second down and ten they'll run it with Hakeem Hill they had what minus four in the first half rushing the ball or zero this no rushing yards in the first half Frosty Rucker made that tackle for Southern California the defensive end out of Truckee California. Yeah when you uh, factor in the fact that Walter's been sacked four times in that first half for minus 21 yards that's how you get the poor poor rushing stats for ASU. Richardson goes the other way. And they finally get him in the right place. And on third down and six. That'll be a first down up to the 35 yard line Zach Miller making another catch to Tupu making another tackle. This is Zach Miller's uh, seventh catch of the afternoon. Here he is number 86 watch the blitz come in there you can see both Trojans flash in the screen that's a sight adjustment there as soon as uh, Miller saw Sartz come after the quarterback he turned looked for the ball and there it was. So it's first down. Ball on the 35. Walter gets it away to the sidelines. That's incomplete. Intended for Derek Hagan. Pressure from Justin Wyatt. Another update from John in New York. Keith, it's a singular All-America Player of the Week update. Could it be Joe Daly of Nebraska? He became the first ever Husker quarterback to throw for 300 plus yards. He also had five touchdown passes with a ties and school record. Text the word player and send it to 64444 to vote or go on ESPN.com. Keyword singular. Keith. Thank you, John. Yeah, still got to walk softly in Lincoln after what happened last week. <laughs> and don't get too fired up about beating the Baylor Bears either, mm, huh? Nope. Matt 
you're going to be looking at third down and eight now for Arizona State. You see SC playing uh, will play very deep in this type of situation. The safeties are even out of the picture. There goes Bing lining up about uh, 15 yards deep in the secondary along with Leach. Oh, to put a lot of air under it and has it intercepted by Darren Darnell Bean. Pass intended for Richardson. The ball may have slipped a bit in the quarterback's hand as uh, Walter let it go. And it was an interception for Darnell Bing. That's his fourth career interception for Darnell Bing, just a sophomore, and playing the uh, half of the field. He's got the deep half. Leach has the other side of the field. Easy interception for Darnell Bing. So he's obviously well recovered from his shoulder injury. He's played hard and tough all day, and Southern California takes over first down at its own 31 yard line, leading by a score of 42 to 7. Reggie Bush is the single back. Liner throws it, sideline, pass caught. Jarrett, fifth catch of the day. And it was thrown against the 5 9 cornerback, Chris McKenzie. Now, the ASU really likes to press their corners, get them up in this tight type of coverage, but they've been burned a couple of times today. Great use of the hands by the freshman, Dwayne Jarrett, to get to the sidelines, push McKenzie away. And again, you just can't say enough about where the ball is delivered. It's always right on target. McKenzie shaken up on the play comes off the field for Arizona State. He is their best cover man. This is Bush with a fake from Liner. Liner throws downfield and the pass is on the hands of Alex Holmes, but defended by Emmanuel Franklin Archie. Now Emmanuel Franklin was a corner last year, and in uh, training camp this year, because of injuries, they needed him. To play, that's Ricardo Stewart rather, but here is Holmes down the middle of the field. Watch the reaction by Franklin coming from the other side of the formation to knock this one away. But Franklin, a former corner, has that type of ability to play receivers man on man. It's second down and 10. Minor going big. Incomplete. Went for the bundle down the sidelines on a fly. And Mike Davis defended Dwayne Jarrett on the play. That's a more favorable size matchup for the Sun Devils. Mike Davis Jr. goes at six foot three and was matching Jarrett stride for stride down the sidelines. Mike, the former or the son of the uh, former Oakland Raider. So it's third and ten. Drop it off to White. Lindell White has a first down. He gets inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. He just dropped back two steps and took off. And Dale Robinson finally tracked him down. Join us next Saturday as ABC's College Football features in the Pac 10. Maurice Drew and the UCLA Bruins going into Tempe against Andrew Walter and the Sun Devils. UCLA is playing up in California later today. And we'll have them for you next week, 12:30 Pacific time, here on ABC Sports. You can catch up with all teams and all scores as you search college football on ESPN.com. Liner gives to Bush, and he's caught short of the line of scrimmage and dragged down by Ishmael Thrower. Uh, Thrower had him down on the ground, and then uh, middle linebacker Justin Burks, working out some frustration, is going to drill Bush. As he's going down, watch the tackle here by Thrower. Now from the right side, boom! Foul. 237 pounds of Justin Burks right That's into Bush's ribs. That is a foul. Yes, it is. Second down, 11. Right through the hands of Reggie Bush. A little bit behind him, to be fair about it. Ball was thrown pretty hard and a little behind him. Mike Davis Jr. on the coverage. 
Time remaining third quarter 904 42 to 7 is our third quarter score. It hit his hands all right it went right through Bush's hands. Yeah it might have hurt his hands but watch his head. He turns around the ball thrown high and to the inside and that uh, might have got a thumb from where he was turned he was awkward. Yep trying to get to it he turned back the other way. This is white. And once again Lindell White finds some daylight. Ricardo Stewart takes his legs away from him at about the 34 yard edge just inside the 35. And so uh, that'll be a pickup uh, regaining some of that yards that was lost and bring up fourth down and six. Key block here by Fred Matua the right guard. And good lead block there by Lee Webb. Ricardo Stewart been around a while and he can put a lick on it. Very solid citizen. Fourth and six they're going. Liner throws it had a man wide open Alex Holmes was out there all by himself and Liner couldn't get it to him because of all the people in his face and so the Trojans are run out of downs. Arizona State will take over the ball pretty good field position for them at 817 to go in the third quarter. That's pretty. What is it. Exposition Park. That is really something. Never really seen it from that angle that I can recall. Beautiful area down here I've been around the museum and so forth. And right now terribly Kemp. That's the America Quest. America. Uh, no. AmeriQuest. I'll get it right yet. Hang with me. AmeriQuest Mortgage Airship providing aerial coverage for today's broadcast. The Freedom. Pilot is Scott Daneker and the cameraman is Aaron Fitzgerald. And they had to put on their sunglasses. All right, here comes Arizona State from the 35 yard line. First down, they trailed substantially 42 to 7 here in the third quarter. And here's Burgess throwing back to the quarterback, and now he's looking for somebody to throw to, and he finds somebody eventually. It is Richardson, but there's going to be a penalty flag uh, back here. Somewhere in the neighborhood of the 25 yard line. Two forward passes on one play. He Burgess threw, threw the forward, ball back he? to uh, Walter, yep. threw it forward. Yeah, he did. Illegal forward pass. Yep. Offense number 16. Yep. Second forward pass. That's how bad it's Penalties going. Yep. Five yards Just. from the spot of the pass and loss of down. It's one of those kind of days. Don't open the door, you'll break your nose. Well, Burgess is fading away as he throws this ball to Walter. That's a forward pass. That's two forward passes on one play. And when you, you know, you start the second half with a kickoff out of bounds, you try a trick play here, you don't execute it. I mean, this is going from worse to ugly. Arizona State's going home now next week to play the UCLA Bruins. And that game will have some echoes in it, too. Mind you, you Sun Devils wind up losing here today. It seems highly likely they'll be five and one. Only one loss in the conference. And if USC runs the table, you've got to figure they're somewhere else. The pass is thrown out to Derek Hagan, and Hagan gets the ball at about the 33 yard line, well, well short of the first down. It'll be interesting to see how the Bruins uh, tackle the Golden Bears in Berkeley yes, this will. afternoon. If the Bears have a any type of letdown and hangover from their uh, near victory here last week against. SC, but uh, after ASU plays UCLA next week, they've got to play California. Yep. So it could very well be the team that actually finishes second in the conference could be in the Rose Bowl. And that ain't a bad place to be on New Year's Day, I'll tell you. No, I like it. Andrew Walter gets away from the crowd, takes off. He does not like to do this a whole lot. He gets out to the 35 yard line. He's 10 yards or so short of the first down. Kevin Arbett tracked him down and made the tackle. Now, the third down in a mile, the Trojans are happy to see Walter pull the ball down and take off, try to pick it up. You can see, watch Lofa Tatupu just playing center field. It opens up for Walter, but so what? There's a fake punt. That's a good one. 
McDonald, Chris McDonald, Mac Zach Miller. And uh, that works for big time yardage and puts the Sun Devils over on the 38 yard line of USC. Well, you almost wonder why they were going to go not go for it on fourth down. There's Miller. Watch him sneak out on this formation. Perfect throw by McDonald. A lot of times those punters will uh, get the olive in their throat and overthrow a wide open receiver like that. Perfectly executed by Chris McDonald and Zach Miller. Chris is a big old guy. He probably played some football at other positions uh, during his time and threw that very well. Uh, Miller now has eight catches for 102 yards. A freshman tight end. I mean, he's he's special. Ball is handed away to uh, Hakeem Hill. And he wiggles in there for about five yards before they get him down. So they're getting a little movement now out of their offense. And with six and a half minutes to go in quarter number three. Tom Osborne is the tight end coach. He doubles as a special teams coach for the Sun Devils. And he says that uh, Zach Miller learns very quickly, especially for a youngster. So he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So if you don't make mistakes, you're going to play a lot. There's it's Tom that, on the sidelines. That, that Tom Osborne, he has no aspirations for Congress. <laughs> The other Dr. Tom is doing quite well. Thank you. Walter went down on his knee, didn't he? Yep. When he came away from the center. This is a game and a day he would rather forget. We've seen him miss a handoff. We've seen him throw interceptions. Here he gets tripped by his offensive right guard, Mike Pollock. So it is third down and nine for the Sun Devils at five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Third quarter has been quiet. Second quarter was all USC. That's however when uh, the Sun Devils scored their touchdown. Straight back. Going down the sidelines for Hagen and it's out of bounds. Incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. Trying to uh, get the ball into the deep zone, but Darnell Bing again just intercepted a very similar type of pass play. And he was all over Derek Hagan on the sidelines, and that's why Andrew Walter let this one sail well out of bounds. For those of you in the eastern cities, New York, Boston, and Miami, and New Orleans, and uh, places like that who don't normally see much of Pac-10 football on a regular basis, uh, the, the, the power that used to exist in the Northwest does not at this particular point in time. The Southern teams have taken over, Southern California being the most dominant as Walter is sacked by a frosty rucker way back at the 47-yard line on fourth down. But uh, the balance of power in the conference now rests, it seems, in the state of California, with USC and UCLA and California being the stronger. I'm 509 to go, third quarter. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. And it's Spotlight very bright for the Trojans of USC as they lead Arizona State 42 to 7. Two undefeated teams. Bumping heads here in the Coliseum, both 5 and 0. Oh. Arizona State's big wins were over Iowa and Northwestern on the road. Ran into a buzzsaw here in Los Angeles today. That's Lindale White. He's got nine yards on that carry. It'll be second down and one. They've certainly got enough points. And it's, this is not a team under Pete Carroll and his folks that are not particularly interested in, in running up a whole lot of points. What they are interested in is uh, is developing other players. But so far, it's too early in, uh, in the ball game. It's only 4:41 to play in the third quarter to be making too many drastic changes of personnel. I am curious, though, if Matt Castle, the backup quarterback, will get any action in this one. This is White going for the first down, and boy, he's just dropping his shoulder and hammering now. He's across the 40, and it's first down at the 39 yard line of Arizona State. Now, if the Trojans are going to feature Lindell White now and take time off the clock and use the running game, it'd be a perfect opportunity for Castle to get in the game. 
Remember, Leinert did injure his neck on that quarterback sneak. He's so valuable, but Castle has not seen any action to speak of so far this year. There he is right there. He's a big guy, too. At one time, he was up working out with the tight ends, and there was one time when they had almost run out of tight ends here at USC. We've seen Alex Holmes and Dominic Bird both in the ballgame today, and both have played well. Another update now coming from New York with John. Well, Keith, it's time for Craig James to pick his Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Last week in Oklahoma, it was Adrian Peterson. Today, it's Jason White to Mark Clayton. What a move by, by Mark Clayton to get to the end zone. Well, Oklahoma comes from behind to pick up the victory, and that is Craig's Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Keith, back to you. Hey, Bill Snyder gets gets targeted in on you. He can give you trouble with. A little a low level of quality and he doesn't have a lot of experience this year to work with Herschel Dennis is in the ball game for the first time this season Herschel Dennis who was a starting tailback a year ago and uh, Mike Davis comes boring in to make that tackle on Matt Leonard and here's another update from Todd. Well Keith all quiet on the western front of the quarterback scene until that play. Matt Castle jumped up and started warming up. Now the word from the bench that I'm hearing is they'd like to keep Matt Leonard in until the fourth quarter, get him plenty of reps. Another player they've got a little concern with is Reggie Bush. He sprained his thumb, you remember, on that pass that went through his hand. But Russ Romano, the trainer, says no big deal. They're not even going to tape it up. Keith? Okay. He was in a very awkward position when he tried to make that catch. He didn't really know where the ball was and grabbed at it. And uh, you hurt yourself. Look at that pass. I mean, perfect. Jarrett right in front of Mike Davis. The ball was right there, but it came out. Two big plays in a row for Mike Davis. He got the sack on Leinert, and that one he just barely ripped the ball loose from Dwayne Jarrett. That may be Matt Leinert's last play. It should be his last play. You're up by 35. I don't care if Arizona State plays 12 quarters in this game, they're not going to beat SC. Always worry about it because when you get a little tired, you get a little fatigue, or you get a little uh, lose a little momentum, any little thing that cause you to relax at the wrong time and you hurt. Here's the pooch punt, high and depends on how it bounces, and it bounces for the Trojans uh, inside the 15 and dead at about the 13-yard line, and there's where Arizona State will get its possession at 2:22 to go in the third quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2 Hummer like nothing else. Singular wireless. Aflac. Ask about it at work. And AOL for broadband. Proud sponsor of First and Ten. Well, let's let's call it the 14 and uh, they'll start from there with Hakeem Hill getting to the outside and getting across the 20 to the 21. That's a pickup of close to seven yards. Darnell Bing took his feet away. Turned him upside down is what he did. Just how effective Fessy's defense has been against a pretty good offense. Stay with the run. Yeah, it, you almost get the feeling right now that uh, Arizona State's just interested in putting together one drive, one positive move down the field. They obviously know they're not going to win this ball game. They have to recover now. What's left of their psyche, which has just been got to been yep. shattered by SC this afternoon. Dignity they need, self-respect to go home and face UCLA. If there's time, we'll have the thrifty car rental post game report for you after this ball game is over with the rundown on all the things that have been shaken through the day. And there's been some pretty good shaken. That is a first down. First down. That's 11 first downs now for Arizona State. 
Eric Wright is in the corner position coming across to this side to defend number 25 a freshman who's had a very good ball game In fact the last two games have been very positive for him and it is uh, Lawrence Jackson taking down Hakeem Hill and now you're seeing you're starting to see a number of substitutions on the defense not only is Eric Wright in the game but uh, Lawan Ramsey playing a little bit defensive end you've got Keith Rivers a true freshman number 55 is in the game as Matt Castle gets warm on the sidelines. Andrew Walter hit and taken down by Ronald Nunn. Blind side corner sack. He just came out of nowhere, and that's the second time the corner has come from that position on the field to sack the Arizona State quarterback. Well, you know, there's a lot of times you see quarterbacks backpedal when they drop back to pass, and that's the reason why, so that the quarterback can see the entire field. But after the play action fake, Walter has his back to Ronald Nunn. Ronald Nunn did the exact same thing last year to Andrew Walter in Tempe. USC now has six quarterback sacks today. So it's 42 7 no scoring in the third quarter and we'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC stations. In baseball vernacular there's your line score. 14 in the first 28 in the second none in the third 42 7 is your score fourth down at six uh, third down at 16 for Arizona State and the Trojans have the bull rush on against Andrew Walter he throws it up the sidelines for Terry Richardson and did he catch it. I believe so well short of the first down. They give him the catch up at the 26 yard line. They had to go to near the 34 in order to get the first down. That's a that's not a catch. No, not a catch. not a catch. Heck of an effort, but not a catch. No, bounced. That is not a catch. They'll punt it. Beauty by Chris McDonald. A lot of hang time on it. Fair catch is called. Greg Carlson drifted under it. Reggie Bush out of the ball game because he slightly sprained thumb and trying to catch a pass from an awkward position. Fourteen and a half minutes to go in the ball game. USC has the ball back. Fourteen and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Southern California has a new quarterback, Matt Castle, big guy. Matt comes in at uh, 6 5, 230, senior. He's uh, getting a chance to play for one of the few times at quarterback and he's going to give it away a lot I would think because this is Herschel Dennis who a year ago was the starting tailback and Herschel Dennis playing really for the first time this season broke off the left side and made something out of it. He's 5'11 200 pounds a junior out of Long Beach and adds to their depth and I mean he has some quality talent at that tailback position the ball is put down at the 39 yard line that was a gain of about six yards yeah he was the starting tailback for the Trojans last year and with him in the game and Lendell White and Reggie Bush just another toy for Norm Chow to play with Reggie Bush is back on the field incidentally he was in there at a wide out position Castle runs away from the pressure that doesn't have any problem with dropping a shoulder and moving it he worked out with the tight ends as we told you and he just picked up the first down on Reggie Bush a two time All American at Southern California is now coaching the secondary at Arizona State Mark Carrier and we're coaching it with enthusiasm I asked him yesterday for his view on Reggie Bush and this is what he said. You got Barry Sanders and Marshall Falk all grouped into one at the college level here. So uh, he's he's outstanding. What makes him so hard to me that they do a great job of how you can't double him because you don't know where he's going to line up at. I'll tell you one thing. Mark Carey was a heck of a football player. Ooh -wee. That's Herschel Dennis on another carry and um, he's got about a yard or so. An update now from John. Keith Texas trying to rebound after that loss last week to Oklahoma when they were shut out. Cedric Benson struggled in that game. Not today already with 136 yards. 14 on that carry for the touchdown as they are doubling up Missouri right now. 28-14. Keith back to you. 
Thank you, John. Horns are trying to climb out from under their burden, having lost last week. Red River shootout one more time. This is Dominique Bird, and this is the third big play of the ball game for Dominique, and he is frisky. Keith, you talked about how big the offensive line is when you add Alex Holmes at 270 and Bird at 260 to that offensive line. That's a lot of beef, but how about Bird in the open field breaking tackle after tackle, looking a lot like Reggie Bush at times? Watch him shake off this one from a good tackler in Franklin and then across the field against the grain. Bouncing off of people. Wow, what a play by Bird. Puts it down, first down on the 35 yard line of Arizona State. Matt Castle is your quarterback. He hands the ball away to Herschel uh, Dennis, and Herschel will. He was out of that Long Beach Poly, one of those Long Beach Poly teams that had such great success down the road. He's quick, very quick. And he's experienced, and the depth that the uh, Trojans have at that one position is, is just awesome. You got him and Lendell White and Reggie Bush. Gain three yards, second down and seven is coming up. Dan's packing his bag. <laughs> Long trip to the heart of Oregon tonight. Timeout called by Southern California, 11:48 to play in the football game, one that has been utterly dominated by. USC. SC on top by 35 points. Thanks in large part to Reggie Bush as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. First quarter, he caught this nine yard touchdown pass from Matt Leinert on their first possession. Then in the second quarter, he throws a 52 yard bomb to Dwayne Jarrett. And how about this punt return that everybody thought went for a long touchdown? He did get 41 yards out of it. In fact, Reggie Bush has never returned a punt for a touchdown. He's got a rushing touchdown, obviously. We've seen a touchdown reception, kickoff return against UCLA last year, and he's even thrown a touchdown pass, but not a touchdown on a punt return yet. Oh, it'll happen. Yes, sir. USC content to run the ball now, get Herschel Dennis back in, uh, in playing shape. And uh, Matt Castle in getting some some playing time at quarterback. You can't really go all season long without uh, having to use a backup quarterback sooner or later. I mean, it's just it's very rare that you can. And uh, Matt Castle's getting some seasoning as he plays behind this man, who earlier today had a little bit of a stinger in his shoulder. You've got the second unit in there along the offensive front as well. Radovich. Watkins, Byers, Malu, and Williams. And they're making some room now. Ricardo Stewart finally makes that tackle. And the Arizona State defensive guys are tired now. They've been beat on a goodly bit today. And all of a sudden, here come all these, these fresh legged 300 pounders uh, from the USC bench to play in the offensive front. Now, with, with Norm Chow and SC's offense, does, it, they make you defend the entire field. With, with not only the personnel, but the types of plays, all the misdirection, the power right at the middle, the long bombs, the short passes, everything you can imagine is in the SC game plan on offense. First down from the 23 yard line of Arizona State. Castle almost fell down. Ball goes this time to Desmond Reed, who's getting some time at tailback, and they roll him up pretty well. Every tailback that ever lived always loves to have a big butt to follow when it comes to crunch time. Talking to Lindale White yesterday about which big butt he chooses, and he's got an assortment to choose from. He said this. Well, they all fight in the huddle. They all think they got the best sides, the left side, the right side. Um, I mean, John Drake, Deuce, uh, Fred, Ryan, I'll run behind the center. They, they all got, I have confidence in all of them. I know they're going to get the holes open, so I'll run anywhere behind that line. Just in case you've forgotten, it's 315, 350, 305, and 370 along the offensive front starting. And the ball is thrown across, and uh, play gains, uh, in fact, play loss up back outside the 20 yard line. Fred Davis 
who is in there at a tight end position now he's a freshman out of Toledo Ohio and today's broadcast aerial coverage being provided by freedom the Ameriquest mortgage airship with the Scott Deniker as the pilot and Aaron Fitzgerald handling the camera and they've had a nice pleasant afternoon cruising up there good weather third down and six now for USC and Castle throws it and uh, Davis catches it and uh, they are short of the first down he was taken out of bounds at about the 17 yard line they have high hopes for Fred Davis he's uh, on the small side for a tight end 6'4", 215. in fact there was some thought with Steve Smith going down last week that Davis would be moved to wide receiver but they uh, project him as being a very effective receiving tight end but he's going to have to beat out Dominic Bird is having a heck of a day. Get a field goal try here of 34 yards. And it's Ryan Colleen. He had a big week last week. He's had another big week today as he drilled that one right down the highway. And that runs it to a 48 to 7 ball game. 9 I mean 45 to 7 ball game at 9.07 to go in the final quarter. Colleen will kick it away to Arizona State after the field goal of 34 yards. 45 to 7 is your score. He's got a lot of foot on that baby. It is downtown. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge. Outback Steakhouse. No rules. Just right. City business with real live small business specialists on the phone. That's a card you can count on. And AOL for broadband. Proud sponsor of First and Ten. It's been a shocking afternoon. No question about it. You've got a new quarterback into the ball game now for Arizona State. That would be Sam Keller, a 6'4 sophomore out of Danville, California. He hands the ball away to Preston Jones, who is a redshirt freshman from East Lansing, Michigan. And he's gained uh, about five yards. Dirk Cutter talking yesterday about playing Southern California and a Pete Carroll defense at this comment. Pete's as good as I've seen as far as uh, he's going to move those pieces around and have an answer to everything you've got. So I think, number one, you have to be diversified. I think you have to have a lot of different, a lot of different packages for him. Uh, I think Cal, uh, both last year when they beat SC and then again last week, I think the thing that Cal did best is uh, they were able to move the ball a little bit on the ground and keep him honest that way. And I think, I think that's a big key, too. And that's exactly what Arizona State has not been able to do is move the ball on the ground against Pete Carroll's defense. Just 16 yards rushing for the Sun Devils. Time remaining 8.08. Arizona State run the ball 25 times. They've gained 16 yards. No. Ouch. That's Burgess coming across in motion and the ball is thrown into the middle of the field by Sam Keller and it is completed and it looks like it's going to be a first down so you can move the chain folks and the man who made the catch is Jamal Lewis. Jamal Lewis a sophomore out of Colorado Springs they're all big 6'4", 246 my word and Lewis is a, uh, a good receiver so they get him cranked up to go along with Zach Miller. That's that's pretty good uh, tight end tandem. That's a good run right there by Preston Jones as he works his way and I mean works his way up to the 40 yard line and uh, he'll be a couple of yards short and Dirk Cutter talking about his uh, freshman sensation at tight end Zach Miller at this comment. What he's done is he's given us that that guy dragging across the middle, underneath the coverage, splitting two deep zones. And what Zach does is make all of our wide receivers, even if they're not the fastest guys, they're all a step faster because we've got a tight end. He's caught eight passes today. Very prominent in today's ball game. 
Keller's pass thrown in the middle of the field and again it's caught this time by Joey Mutz and he'll be taken down at the 45 yard line. Moe is uh, a nickname. Yeah, it's a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Livermore, California. His uh, real first name is Harold. Harold. I like. I can see why he likes Moe. <laughs> That combination of words is <laughs> would be a would uh, gotta, <laughs> I'm gonna have to visit with him and talk about that. First down, balls on the 45 yard line. Keller with a little happy feet action there, gets his coattail pulled, but he gets loose. And uh, nobody to throw it to, so he, it's one of those moments as Lord you'll help me I won't call you for 10 days and he's going to get up and walk away from the tackle and let's get an update now from John in New York. Well Keith Missouri trying to fight back against Texas and they get the touchdown Brad Smith keeps it calls his own number and goes in but they missed the point after so as a result Texas still leads this one by eight with about five to go in the game Keith. Oh. I'm grunting a lot now. 541 to play in the ball game as Sam Keller looking oh. around. Oh my goodness, the ball. And then did he have enough forward action to get an incomplete pass call on it? Lawrence Jackson was eating him up. Jackson, Jackson is uh, is another red shirt freshman that's big and very quick coming off that defensive end spot. Yeah, he's got about three sacks on the year. Almost picks up his fourth right there, but that's a good call. His arm was going forward. The ball went forward, and it's just an incomplete pass. 45 to 7 ball game. Who would have thought it? I didn't. Not I. Mm -mm. But I never thought I'd shoot 112 at the TPC either. <laughs> <I did. laughs> uh, Frank Burles is responsible for that. There's a sack. Lawrence That's Jackson. Lawrence Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Yeah, he keeps playing like that. They'll call him Mr. Two. It was really fun, though, to see Mark Carey enjoying himself coaching football. It really was. You got to find somebody to block a defensive end, don't you? Yeah, I would think. He's just harvesting right now. Seven sacks of Arizona State quarterbacks today for SC. Brings their season total to 28. 29. Quarterback is holding the ball because the quarterback can't find anybody to throw it to in the secondary because the receiver he was staring at was double covered. And so it all adds up to uh, not very good things happening. Four forty three to go in the ball game. time for our Dodge defensive playbook. This is a blindside corner blitz by the Trojans Ronald Nunn watches Andrew Walter goes back turns his back with a play fake and he gets drilled dead in the back by Ronald Nunn ASU quarterbacks have been sacked only eight times in the first five games this year eight times today by the Trojans by seven different players. Brandon Hance has now come in at quarterback for Southern California. And Lee Webb, uh, the fullback, moved into that tailback spot and he picked up a pretty good gain on the play. Brandon Hance, of course, was a starter at Purdue for a couple of years and uh, ran into some health problems, wanted to come back home to the West. He is from out here and got out here and it never did get really a full health. Get himself in a competitive position, but stuck with it, getting his education, and he's getting a chance to play some football as well. He's a talent. This is David Kirkman, who's from Mercer Island, David Washington. David That's uh, right across on Lake Washington from the city of Seattle. Tonight on ABC. <laughs> Well, there's daylight in there. The fresh legs come into the ball game uh, against a tired uh, football team. You're going to see that kind of play. The Pac-10 today. You have Oregon uh, beating Arizona 28 to six in the fourth quarter. 
Oregon State 29-14 uh, over Washington in the fourth quarter. UCLA California at four o'clock and uh, Stanford Washington State up in Pullman tonight. Keith you talked about Brandon Hans coming over from uh, Purdue maybe he saw a young man by the name of Kyle Orton there that he didn't think he could get any playing time. Well, that could be. And almost David Kirkman was almost gone. But uh, Lee Webb was blocking for him and the Sun Devils track him down and stop him right about the 20 yard line with one tick less than three minutes to play in the ball game. And part of the big news around uh, the SC campus these days is the groundbreaking that's coming shortly for the new basketball arena. They've got sufficient funds now to start construction on it and that's going to change the climate of the game of basketball in this community a lot. That's what it'll look like when it's done. It'll be a multi-purpose build, building, but still a home for the basketball team. They've never really had a, a, an arena of any size for basketball on campus, and this is on on land owned by uh, USC, but actually across the street from the existing campus. But as time goes on, I suspect it'll be considered all campus. And it is the 17-yard line now. With 2:15 to play in the ball game, of course, Arizona State's had a great basketball program for years and years over there. Ned Wolf, I remember some great teams that Ned produced. It. Oh, he had some wars with the UCLA Bruins, and that carry is down to about the 13-yard line. Remember, the if time allows, the thrifty car rental post game will be right along with John and Craig and Aaron. And uh, they'll have something to say about what uh, you have seen today in this ball game between Southern California and Arizona State. Both came in at five and zero, oh, and uh, USC ranked number one in the country. Uh, there was a big push for Oklahoma last week after their win over Texas. It wasn't an utterly dominating win, and uh, USC struggled with California. But I think you chalk that up to the quality of the California Golden Bears team. They're pretty good. And today USC comes out with everything working nothing working for the Arizona State Sun Devils and lo and behold it was a completely dominant performance. Second half not much scoring they certainly didn't need any they got three points in the second half and uh, halftime it was 42 to 7. And since that time uh, some of the younger people have had a chance to play Matt Leinert uh, had a. A bit of a problem in his neck. He seems to be all right. He came back and played well later, but he has not played in the fourth quarter as the other quarterbacks are getting some time. And this group is threatening to stick at the end zone as as they just punch it right into the middle of the field. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Zach Miller of Arizona State, the freshman tight end. He caught eight passes for 102 yards, and uh, Dwayne Jarrett. The USC wide receiver, also a freshman, 18 years old. He caught five passes for 139 yards and three touchdowns. And those three touchdowns all came in the second quarter when SC just buried the Sun Devils. You know, you look at uh, SC's schedule. They got Washington here next week, then they go to Pullman, where we'll see him against the Cougs, and then at Oregon State, and then Arizona here before they round out with Notre Dame and UCLA. The crowd today was 90,000 to 11. There's a penalty flag thrown on that play. Last Saturday we had 90,000 and eight. So uh, <laughs> any man, the way they're going, the Trojans the will uh, set start, a new uh, attendance record. Uh, they were in the Five middle 80s last year, and uh, this year they're going to be in the high 80s at least. Yeah, especially when you look at Notre Dame coming in here at the end of the year, right around Thanksgiving. From the seven. So the end of a long day and a hard trip for the Arizona State Sun Devils with 40 seconds to play. They're down by a score of 45 to 7. The Southern California Trojans uh, uh, didn't really put any pressure on. They just let people play football and they didn't try anything fancy. They were per perfectly satisfied with the number of points that they already have on the scoreboard and uh, the run the ball in the middle and and leave it at that. Easy to smile in the wake of that kind of performance. But uh, Arizona State historically in the years since they joined uh, 
They had played 20 games uh, since they joined the conference. And uh, SC having won the last four, now five. At the end of this game, SC will have the edge in the series 12 to 9. So the Sun Devils have never been easy for anybody in this conference, and particularly USC. And they had to put two seconds back on the clock. That'll make a difference. That was really vital, yes. Very important. So now it's a matter of Arizona State just uh, running out the clock and, and letting it go. There's there's no reason in the world to stop that clock again unless somebody picks up a first down, which you have to do. But there is uh, Dwayne Jarrett, who came west from New Jersey, and there's Dirk Cutter, who uh, went south from Pocatello, and uh, is running a fine program at Arizona State. And Keith, I just want to wish you the very happiest of birthdays come Monday. Oh, thank you, sir. It's a whole mule train worth of candles on that cake, isn't it? <laughs> It'd take a mule to tote them. Art Barton and Ben even played happy birthday, and I thank them for that. Once again, our final score is uh, USC 45, Arizona State 7. ABC Sports Online, ESPN.com, search ABC Sports. And now we go back to New York and John Saunders. I want to you three, one, two, three.